Hey guys, welcome back to Learn Shade Lesson 2. I'm going to do this a little bit differently this time. It's going to be completely unscripted, so I'm just going to do everything off the cuff, and we'll see how it goes. So first thing, I'm going to load up Shade, and you can see I have a lot of different experiments here, um, which we'll get to at some point, and we can see this cool effect did with Houdini, pivot point explosion, which basically had a special effect that allowed a single object that was made of lots of little pieces basically be uh, exploded in a cool way. I think what I said last time was we're going to look at making a cool holographic shader. So the first thing I'll do is make a new shader. I'll call that holographic. Okay, so basically with this shader, you turn off lighting, and that will make it look flat. May also change the background to be a bit darker, so I'll put on night mode. All right, so we can see here that we've just got a sphere. Now one of the things you can do is we can take the position of each fragment on the material surface using the position node. And if we just plug that straight into diffuse, we can see the position represented at each point on the object, which is kind of useful. Now we can do some other stuff with this, um, with the math, so that we can actually create cool effects. So if I take the split node, that will let me split out the x, y, and z components of the position uh, into separate numbers. Now if I take that and put it in something like sine, which is a sine wave, and take g, which is our y component, the names are just RGB, but you know they represent each component. So we see that we get this vertical gradient. If I put that in diffuse, we can see that it's a vertical gradient again on the surface of the sphere based on the Y position. Now I can then change the period of the sine wave by multiplying the value. Now in shade, if I want to just create a number, I use a number node. And with the number node, I can assign a value or I can make it into a property. So initially I'll just assign a value something like 10. And then I'll I can plug multiple things into an input and by default it'll just add. But if I tap on this, I can cycle through the different mul uh, operators and say multiply. And what I get here is I've increased the period so then you get this kind of wavy line effect. If I change this to be like 20, you know, the lines get more um, thin and there's more of them. Now, the values that sine outputs uh, goes between negative one and one. So you'll notice that you've got these black bars. These black bars are essentially where it goes negative and it can't represent that as a, as a pixel value. So instead of just putting sine in there, I'll use remap, which will take a range of values and map it to another range. So for instance, I can take negative one to one and map that from one to one. Oh, sorry, from zero to one. And if I put that in, then I get, you know, a bit better representation of the values because now they only go between zero and one. There's no negative. Now with this number node, there's an option to turn into a property. And a property is a something that gets exposed by the shader when we use this in Unity or Codea it will actually show that, like you can manipulate that property and then update the appearance of the shader in real time. So I change to a property, nothing much happens. But I can give it a name, and that name's what's going to be exposed to whatever engine you use it in. So I might just call this um, bands or something. All right? And then I can also just drag this uh, value and change these, which makes it a bit easier. Um, so make this higher and 
give us our lines. So this is the lines that will make up the um, hologram effect. So we can see here, it's a nice cool lines. Uh, the next thing we can do is vary this value over time. So right now we've just got multiplying the position value that we get, but we can also add stuff. So we can take, say, time, which is a node that just gives you the current time, and we could stick that in there. So what I probably want to do is add some amount to this. So what I might do is grab a multiplier node, um, stick it in, and then add that. Now, the second value is always zero, so we'll change this to say one. You can see it's very slowly moving. So what I might want to do is increase this value. And you can see now it's moving a bit more. So that gives us a very basic basis of the holographic effect. But it still doesn't look quite right. We can't actually see through it. Um, I might change the model as well to the shader ball. And you can see it's still not quite right. Um, and basically because holograms typically transparent. And they kind of glow a little bit. So what we can do is essentially grab the um, the settings and change it to additive. Now the blend mode set to additive will mean that it adds the color to the background uh, multiplied by the opacity. And we can see now we get a kind of more glowy effect. Uh, and we can use the opacity to change kind of how much glowiness it has like how, how transparent it is. Um, and also we'll notice it's white. What we can do here is we can multiply the amount of diffuse by a particular color. And luckily we have a color node, which is a property node as well, just like number, but it's it works with colors. So if we take that and then multiply that, which remember you can use the multiply operator, and you get this cool effect. And if you tap on the color node, you can change the color to whatever you want. So you can get all these different effects. Um, and there you go. That's that's a basic hologram shader. Uh, there are other things you can do. You can distort it. You can add rim lighting. Um, I might do that now, actually. Just add a little bit of rim lighting to make it kind of more interesting. Um, and so I'll take this out for just a second. And what I might do is what you can do is you can grab the normal, which is the direction the surface facing. Um, this is, you can see in there it says view in brackets, which means it's view space. We won't worry too much about what that means, but to create a Fresnel effect, which is the edge sliding kind of stuff, uh, you can do a dot product between that and the view direction, which is another graphics term for basically incoming direction from the camera to the surface. Um, and you can see if you, you look at the previews for this when you do the dot product, um, you kind of get this effect. You can see it's like brighter in the, in the middle. Uh, then you can use one minus, which will just say do one minus that, which gives you this edge. Um, so I'll grab this stuff and I can just multiply it together. like this. And if I do that, I get a more pronounced effect at the rim. And simply mod multiply those together. Uh, maybe make opacity a bit higher. And you can see it's kind of cool effect where it's more pronounced on the edges. Um, and you can adjust this to change like how strong the effect is. Uh, but I think this is enough for now. So um, Thanks for watching guys, and I'm looking forward to doing a lot more of these with other effects, and I'm willing to take requests if anyone has any ideas of stuff they would want to see, or explanations of how some of the example shaders work. And uh, thanks for watching. See ya.